Okay, we're going to start. Okay, so hi, I'm Heidi with Opticom. Um, you've been talking to me or to Hope. We pretty much work with all of the uh, all of y'all from Platt. And um, we told you about the webinar. Uh, short. We're going to keep it under 10 minutes for sure. I have a timer sitting on my phone right here. Um, so we will definitely keep it under 10 minutes. We're going to do a really brief introduction today. That's just kind of an intro to CCTV. This is really, really generic, um, really basic, basic knowledge. So it's really good for you to know if you already know it, you know, just a little brush up on it, things like that. I'm going to show you some products so you can kind of see and, and get an idea size-wise and things like that. And then in the future, as we uh, move you know, forward, I think we're going to do some more of these basic training sessions. Um, our next one's going to be kind of like how to recognize an opportunity and how to uh, get the information you need, what information you need to get so that you can quote out the opportunity. So, uh, so that'll be the next one we do. And again, we're talking five to 10 minutes. So we'll dive in with this one. So intro to a CCTV system. Um, closed circuit television is not only used in security systems, but it's also for monitoring applications such, a, such as production facilities and processing plants. So you need to remember that for the systems with cameras, things like that, so when we're recognizing opportunities and all kinds of different things, that there are uh, security applications, and then there are applications that are just for processing, which typically falls into the industrial world. So whenever you're into industrial sites, they'll do some security, but a lot of them want cameras for processing. But of course, if you're at a mini mart, a gas station, a, you know, um, a mini storage, a, a home or whatever, anything like that, they're looking for security purposes. So we will briefly go over um, some of the components that you would need to go with that, right? So every system still needs the main components, whether you're going with an IP system or an analog system or a TBI system. And if you don't know what those are, we are going to have a training on that as well. Um, but no matter what system you're going on, they all have the same core components. So you've got your basic camera, right? So uh, whether that's a, a box camera, bullet camera, any type of camera, um, the camera is going to include the actual camera itself and then the lens, the housing, the bracket, whatever you need. Uh, then you've got your cables and your wire uh, or wireless. So when you're building a system, you need to know if it is a uh, system that's going to be cabled or if it's going to be wireless. Um, sorry, I'm just making sure I've got my timer up here. And um, there we go. Okay, and then uh, DVR, NVR software, which is what you're going to view it all on. Uh, then you've got your power and your accessories for that. So uh, your power supply or pigtails or whatever it may need, but your main thing is your power, right? And then a monitor to view it all on. So those are kind of the five core components. There may be small accessories that play into each of those, but those are the five main things when you're building a system that you need to make sure you have. If you uh, do a quote for a customer, and you forget a, a small accessory, that's not going to kill you to throw it in if you have to. But these are the five main things you have to make sure you have for every single system. Um, so moving into the different kinds of cameras, right? Again, this is pretty basic knowledge. So um, so forgive me if, if this is, you know, if you're way beyond this, but this is general. So uh, we've got an outdoor bullet camera. So I've got two of them here, right? Uh, this is the one that's in the picture. This is our TIB 2105, uh, but just generic, right? So outdoor uh, rated right? It's got a sun shield on it. So this is a sun shield. It just helps protect the glare. Um, and then you've got it uh, with or without IR. So this one, you can see the LEDs and it has IR. Um, and a lot of bullets do this now. It's really, really great feature when you see this extra ring right here. Uh, that's really good because uh, infrared will reflect on the glass and that ring separates it from the LEDs to where you don't get a glare on the image. So if you're going to sell anybody's bullet camera, um, I mean, obviously we want you to sell ours, but if you're going to sell somebody else's, you really kind of want to make sure it's got that ring on it. It makes a big difference. Uh, so fixed or verifocal, this one is a verifocal that is adjustable on the bottom. It's got uh, screws right here. So that's how you can adjust the verifocal on an outdoor camera. Um, and then a fixed would be a fixed lens. It's non-adjustable. And then it's got a cable management bracket. This is, again, pretty generic on bullet cameras nowadays. Uh, that means that the cable goes through here. So when you mount to a wall, you don't have to have cable hanging like this, right? So all the cable would be shoved in here and the rest of it would go through the wall to where there's nothing exposed. So no one could come up and cut the cable. Um, so this is a pretty great solution for all outdoor applications. Uh, bullet cameras are our, our typical go-to. Here's another one just to show you a size difference, right? So this is really small. This is called a lipstick bullet. Um, so again, another outdoor rated camera that's just a little bit different from the, the ones that you um, typically see when you're, uh, you know, put the system together. So next we've got the dome camera, right? So dome camera, same thing. So you've got an indoor dome camera, which is right tangled on the other one right here so indoor dome cameras typically are plastic right so you can uh hear that uh and see that that's plastic indoor dome right here this is an infrared version thing same thing it's got the foam ring so what that foam around the lens does is it's pushing up against the glass so you don't get the infrared reflection again really important 
Um, and then these come in fixed or verifiable. Anybody's camera, same thing. Um, they all kind of work like that. And this is a vandal. It's a lot heavier. It's metal. It's hard, right? And then um, it's got these special little screws here so that when it's mounted up, people can't rip it off. They can't unscrew it. It's got a special tool that comes with it. Um, and then all of the cable fits inside of here. And most vandals are typically built that way. Um, so the good thing about domes, and a lot of people like domes, is because they're non-threatening. You can walk into somebody's office or someone's place of business, and there's a small dome up there, and it's not threatening um, as far as like a camera pointed at your face, which a lot of people get not offended by that, but they don't, well, in 2018, they might get offended by that, but but they don't like it. It just makes them uncomfortable. So a dome is a really great for offices, uh, hotels, things like that. Um, and then it's ideal for indoor applications like that. Uh, the Vandal Dome, however, is ideal for like low-hanging eaves. Um, or other areas that are low that, that could give you concern. So if you're worried about somebody coming up with a bat and smashing a camera because it's a low-hanging eave, you definitely want to go with a vandal dome versus a bullet camera that they can hit and really smack it right off of whatever it's mounted on. Um, so next, you've got a pan tilt zoom camera. Pretty generic, um, uh, or not generic, it's a specialized camera. I'm sorry, pan tilt zoom. So PTZ, indoor, outdoor rated, comes with a wall or pendant mount. Uh, depending on your couple of customer's application, uh, 10 times zoom to 36 times zoom um, are the typical sizes. So you'll have a 10, a 12, maybe a 20, something like that, somewhere in that range. Um, the good thing about a PTZ is one camera can get a lot of coverage, right? Because it pans and it tilts and it zooms all over the place. Uh, the bad part is, is if you've got one camera on the corner of a building and you're trying to cover an entire parking lot and it's panning, whenever it's panned and pointing at one area, it's not going to see the other area. So a lot of customers that are looking for security um, and, and even processing certain things, I really like to drive that message home because I don't want them to put this giant expensive, right, because PTZs are expensive, expensive camera in place and then be disappointed when, uh, you know, they get robbed or they miss something vital to their, their video footage because the camera was pointed in a different direction. Um, and typically with the cost of a PTZ, so if you've got a PTZ on the corner of a building, and we'll just say for the sake of numbers, it costs you $1,200, you could get three cameras for the same cost as or less to point in all of those directions and have full coverage all the time. So just something to keep in mind, but PTZs can be very, very handy if you have someone sitting there constantly watching and monitoring and zooming in. Um, a box camera, right? So here's, I don't have a PTZ to show you, but here's a box camera, right? So this is how a box camera comes. The lenses are not included. So you do need a separate lens when you do a box camera. These are not outdoor rated, right? These have to be into a housing. So you can see on the slide there, I forgot to grab one. Um, but they have to go into a housing to be weatherproof. Um, and then the brackets sold separately. Um, you can do a fixed or a varifocal lens. These are very much a la carte. So everything is individual when you go with a box camera. You see a lot of those in banks. Banks, they want people to know that they have cameras there. Um, the housings for these things are massive, right? So same thing. If you're putting a camera somewhere where these guys are like, I want to deter anyone from even trying to come in, that's what you want to go with. You want to throw it in a massive housing, and, and that's how you want to do it so that people see it and they, you know, think twice about breaking in or, or anything like that with a security-type application. Um, and that's pretty much our, our under 10-minute uh, session. It just kind of talks about the different types of cameras and things like that so you can get a general idea of size and, and you know, um, how you would use them, where you would use them, things like that. Just something to get you started. Uh, like I said, the next one we do is going to be recognizing a sale and, you um, how to recognize it, the kind of questions to ask to kind of get your foot in the door and, and start building a system enough to where you can come to me or to Hope or to one of your datacom specialists and say, hey, guys, here's everything I have from the customer. Can you build me a system where you're not having a, you know, go back to the customer over and over. So that's what we're going to talk about next time, uh, which we'll send emails out and we'll call you about that and things like that. So I will unmute everyone. If anyone has a question, you're welcome to ask. Um, or if you want to jump off now, that would be the time. So. I think, oh, I have to do everyone individually. Okay. So make sure you don't have yourself muted on your end if you do want to say something. So there it is. So if anybody has a question, feel free to ask it now. Uh, otherwise, we're, uh, we're all done with our, our thing. Okay. okay. No questions? Perfect. Oh, that's our 10 minutes. My timer's going off now. So uh, y'all have a great day. And again, you can give us a call or shoot us an email if you need any additional information, okay? Thanks, guys. See you later.